about our African safaris. Um, just a little background. Um, I have a passion for Africa. I went there first uh, at the end of high school and have been now 11 times. Um, I have traveled for our, where we go on our trips, uh, and I just find that uh, an African safari and the Africa experience is unbeatable. And I look forward to sharing the itineraries that we have today. Yeah. Thanks, John. Hi, this is Ellen. Um, great to uh, see some familiar names on the call today. So you may have spoken with me on the phone. I'm an expedition advisor for Zagram. I also have the uh, privilege to travel in the field with Zagram quite a bit, and I have um, done one of our Africa safaris. So uh, we're happy to chat with you today. If you have any questions, please, as uh, was mentioned earlier, type them in and we'll be happy to answer them. So I wanted to start out, first of all, by Africa, why Zagram? Uh, and I think the two biggest reasons why Zagram are our two leaders, Lex Hess and Chris Stamper. Many of you may have traveled with Lex. He has guided for Zagram since its founding, uh, and Chris he, he uh, has his own safari company and now pretty much just guides uh, for Zagram. He's been, um, he's known for teaching a lot of the guides in Botswana. And what I think a guide does, you can go, you can be on a safari and have the local guide, which they're excellent. But someone like Lex brings it all together and he's able to, to put it in perspective with other places you might have visited. He is an expert. He's, he's authored five books. And he has spent probably three to four months a year uh, in the countries that we are visiting. And he is just a huge asset uh, to our trips and make them come alive. I, I'll just um, add on that. You know, I speak with a lot of people when they return home from their expeditions with us. And uh, Lex is absolutely a star. We have a lot of people who will um, call us and say, what is Lex doing this year? Is it anything I haven't done before? Uh, he's just that good. He's somebody that... Uh, I don't think I've ever heard anything negative about anybody returning on a trip with Lex. Uh, he's absolutely a star, and we're so glad that he continues to uh, lead our expeditions in Africa. So as we've grown our expeditions, we needed a second leader, and we actually went to Lex and said, who would you recommend? And he recommended Chris Stamper, who works with him um, in South Africa. And I actually traveled on Chris's first trip, and in fact, uh, I think took this picture, which is Murchison Falls in Uganda, and I came back saying, Chris is a young Lex S. And Lex doesn't mind us saying that. He is also phenomenal. He's got the same quiet demeanor. He is excellent with logistics. And his knowledge of wildlife in Africa from growing up in South Africa is amazing. And I think whether you go on a safari with Lex or with Chris, the results are the same. And we are able to offer more trips now that we have both Lex and Chris uh, guiding uh, trips in Africa. So just before we get into the specific itineraries that uh, we are offering in uh, 2017 and 2018, uh, which are amazing, I do want to mention um, for maybe if you've never been on an Africa safari before um, and you're wondering how does it work, um, just like all of the Zagram expeditions that we offer, Safaris are all our worst parties are all inclusive as well, so it it makes it really easy. Um, that includes your from the moment you arrive in Africa, your transfer, pick up from the airport to the time that you go home, transfer back. You're completely taken care of. Will include um, you know all of your accommodations, all of your meals, all of your drinks on safari are included, so that's nice. Um, that includes alcohol, also. You know, we have uh, actually all gratuities are included, which if you're going with another safari or if you're comparing, um, that's something that's actually really, really a big asset to our trips is that uh, the gratuities are included because there is a, a culture of tipping um, along the way. But we take care of that for you, um, so that's nice and easy. And the other benefit of, you know, we're talking about Chris and Lex, and they are such amazing guides and we they know which of the local guides at the camp are the ones that they want to work with and so you're not just with um, our African guides Chris and Lex you're also with these local guides as we go from camp to camp but you have that leader with you that really stitches the whole thing together and makes sure that the experience that you're having as we're moving throughout different camps or even different countries in Africa is one story it's one cohesive experience from beginning to end um, and you can expect the same level of guiding and accommodation and experience the entire time. 
So let's get into the specific itineraries. Um, John, do you want to talk about Southern Africa's diversity? Yes. So this is uh, a trip that we've been operating for a number of years. Uh, it's led by Lex. It's a sort of what I say a blowout trip that gives you a desert environment in Namibia, um, a green season environment in Botswana, and uh, a uh, savanna environment in Zambia. And so if you have been to Africa and want to go see more, this is a great trip. Or if you haven't been or think you only have one trip to Africa, this is a great trip because of what it covers. So with the world famous Okavango Delta, uh, Namibia, which I was just there in March, the, the landscapes are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, with the with the red rock and desert, with the blue sky. We also visit the, the Himba people, and then going the wildlife course in Botswana and in um, Zambia. And all of these trips, the sort of rhythm, if you haven't been on a safari, is you're up early each morning, uh, you have a light breakfast, you're out on safari, you're back mid-morning, uh, have a, a, a lunch, an early lunch brunch, a nap time, tea, and then you're back out in the afternoon and back for dinner, and maybe a night, uh, maybe a night safari. That depends where we are because it's not allowed everywhere. But that's sort of a rhythm uh, of your day. We do put in a few days, like on this trip, because it is 22 days. You're not doing that every single day, uh, but we do that. That most of the days are uh, safari days. And this is the one thing to point out is we do use Mambo Camp on this one, which is one of the iconic camps in uh, Botswana. Um, for those who want to go just to Botswana, which is probably considered the best game viewing in Africa due to the concentration of wildlife, uh, we have Ultimate Botswana, which we have also run for years, and it stays at the best camps. Uh, we start with a little experience down at Camp Kalahari and then move up into the delta. The delta is amazing because it's a, it's a wet area within a desert. This is the Kalahari Desert. The water for the delta comes down from Angola and the Congo. So you don't get much rain in Botswana, but there is a lot of water, which uh, produces a lot of wildlife. Um, I can pretty well guarantee on these, so I guarantee you will see lions, and I don't think we've had a trip that has not seen cheetah and leopard. So this is a great bucket list type trip, staying at Dumatown, Mambo, uh, Kijira, which is a water camp, uh, Tubu trees, uh, and is the way to really see Botswana at its best. So just an, another note on um, the Botswana itinerary and um, the Southern Africa's diversity itinerary. These are really great trips for if you've never been on a safari before and you're thinking, well, how do I introduce myself to Africa? A lot of people go to Botswana first and they are not disappointed. If you think that you might only go to Africa once and you want to get, um, you know, do the ultimate itinerary for your one trip to Africa, then maybe that Southern Africa's diversity itinerary that we mentioned earlier um, would be the one for you. So both excellent trips, great reviews. I think you mentioned all these points, John. Yeah. All right. And so next is a, a new program called Signature Botswana. It's a shorter program. Uh, it's designed so people can be away from North America in under two weeks. Uh, it has nine days uh, within uh, Botswana, and it stays in more mid-category camps. It's priced at $99.80. Uh, Chris Stamper is leading this. Uh, you get the experiences in the Okavango Delta, and you get the, an a desert experience and a savanna experience. So it has three diverse uh, uh, um, areas that you visit, which will give you three different habitats of animals. And so if you're short of time, uh, and want to pack as much in as possible, um, this is a very good uh, introductory trip uh, to uh, Botswana. Next is Ultimate Namibia, which is also led by Chris. Um, Namibia is sort of coming into its own. It does not have a high concentration of wildlife. Uh, people go to Namibia for the Himba people, and they also go for the beautiful Susafle, the, the, red, do the red dunes, as well as some wildlife, but you shouldn't go to Namibia expecting uh, vast herds of uh, wildlife, although there are some unique animals. So the oryx is found there. Uh, you do get some desert lions, but they are, because it's such an ext uh, extremely dry environment, there are um, not vast numbers. You, we will get black and white rhinos, however, uh, which is, Namibia is actually the only region where they are found. 
uh, we do do a, a walk up in Sosa Play on one of the Great Dunes. And this is a trip that leaves in July uh, and uh, is, say, led by Chris and is a very complete visit uh, to Namibia. Then moving on to another part of Africa, uh, we've got gorillas in the Great Migration. Um, and uh, this is one that tries to hit two uh, bucket list uh, uh, animal uh, visits during the year, and we start in, in Tanzania, and what we have done there is we, uh, you'll see on the map, we have two stops in the Serengeti. Uh, we do that because we have one which is a stationary camp and one which is a mobile camp. Because you never know where the, the migration is going to be exactly, this will pretty well guarantee that if it is north, we see it from the, um, from the, the fixed camp, and if it is elsewhere, we will see it from the mobile camp. So um, we had a great experience on this last year. We're on running this trip both in 2017 and um, a variation on it in 2018. Then we move on to Rwanda, where we have a visit to the chimps and then to the gorillas at the end. The mountain gorillas, having done it, is one of the most awe-inspiring experiences I've had. We, do, we, we include two days of permits, which is highly unusual. Most companies don't do that. Uh, due to the expense, and the reason we do that is two reasons. One, it would give you uh, a second chance if you didn't see gorillas the first day, which is extremely rare. More importantly, I find it's the first day you take pictures, and the second day you just appreciate the gorillas. Uh, and it's a great way to end a safari and see the iconic migration and the gorillas uh, in Rwanda. We go on to remote Tanzania, which I'm actually going to turn over to Ellen because she actually just did this trip. And it was so incredible. Um, so in Tanzania, this is a, an area that we're excited to be adventuring more. And we call it remote Tanzania because there's a lot of these camps um, in the remote south of Tanzania that are less visited that have just absolutely amazing concentrations and balances of wildlife in their park. So we start at the Sand River Salu. Um, the Salu Game Reserve is actually not a park. It is a wildlife and game reserve um, that had, it was actually made an UNESCO World Heritage Site for the amount of wildlife there in uh, 1982. So it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's, you'll see so much there. And it's actually really beautiful. The Sand River where we stay is a wonderful luxury camp. Um, and as John said earlier, it's a nice balance of safaris in the morning and the afternoon and just um, really enjoying yourself. Um, we visit some other remote uh, camps. Kigeli Ruaha is absolutely wonderful. And then on to, um, to Katavi as well. So these are really nice balanced safari experiences. I thought, I mean, so much. Lions, elephants, zebras, chimps, like just the whole everything we really saw. Um, cheetahs. So for the chip experience in particular, which is in Mahale, is really fascinating. Um, you stay at Mahale Camp, which is on a lake. It's really beautiful. You have your nice experience on the lake. But in the morning, uh, the trackers will go up and see where the chimps are. And we have the opportunity then to go up with the guides and observe the chimps in their habitat. And so we do try and do that um, every day. We spend two days there just to make sure that we have the time to go up and um, visit the chimps. This particular group of chimps um, is habituated to human observation because they've been studied by Japanese researchers since the 1960s. So it's a, absolutely just an amazing experience to go up and see, um, to just observe them. It's wild how human they are. It's really amazing. Um, I think I covered all the great points about that. I really, really can't say enough about that. And one other thing I'll mention is this trip, like most of our trips, has a very limited number of spaces. We operate all of our Africa trips with a maximum of 12 people. This one can only take 11. They're often limited by the permits, so there is very limited accommodations. With, with 12 people, we would have two uh, Land Rovers. Everyone always has a window seat, so to speak. Uh, and so the size of the group uh, is, is small, which is very important for Lex uh, or Chris to be able to talk to you about what you're actually seeing. Another uh, benefit that we don't even really think about as we're looking at the itineraries is we do charter bush planes for these itineraries. So usually we have a plane all to ourselves. And uh, that's an amazing experience on its own as you're taking off, you know, if you're 
going out of the Serengeti or landing into a park, you're looking down and all of these little specks on the ground below you become animals and it's just absolutely amazing view um, of Africa through the bush plane too. Right, and I will reiterate that having done an African safari by land and by bush plane, once you've done it by bush plane, you'll never go back because <laughs> what will take five hours on the ground takes you 20 minutes or 15 minutes in the air. So a, new, a country that I, I visited a couple of years ago and is just opening up is Zimbabwe. Uh, they have a uh, game that is the equal of Botswana, um, and they are developing camps that are quite spectacular. Uh, but as Zimbabwe has been sort of off the travel map, they are much less expensive. And so Zimbabwe is a very good value for safaris. And this one we start um, in Victoria Falls, which is Livingston, and we stay actually at Tokelea Camp, which is right there. And then we go down to Wangi National Park, which is known for its elephants, uh, but they also have a wide variety of game. And then we go into eastern Zimbabwe before going up to the savanna area of both the Lower Zambezi and the South Lawanga National Park, which are, are remote areas in Zambia. This does offer the opportunity one morning, instead of going on a game drive, to go on a walk. And we, I would encourage you to do that. While you may not see as much big game, you definitely appreciate some of the smaller things. I've seen everything from tarantulas uh, to birds that you would never otherwise see. And so um, this trip has several opportunities to do uh, some walking safaris, both Wangi and in South Luanga, South Luanga uh, National Park, you can do uh, walking safaris. And this is led by Lex. Um, some of the highlights we've gone over. Uh, Did you mention Victoria Falls? And this has also Victoria Falls. So those of you who have not seen it, it's uh, quite spectacular. Uh, you'll be seeing it from the Zambian side before uh, flying down to Wangi National Park in uh, Zimbabwe. Madagascar, we've included it. It's geographical Africa, but it's an entirely different experience from any of the other trips that Ellen and I are talking about. 80% um, of the wildlife here is endemic only to Madagascar. The lemurs go from a size of not even as big as your hand up to uh, some of the injury, which uh, would probably stand five feet high. So Madagascar is a unique uh, place to visit because of its biodiversity. I will also say that Madagascar is one of the harder places to visit. Those of you who have been to Africa, whether East or Southern Africa, you need to readjust expectations. The infrastructure in Madagascar is not fantastic. The accommodations are comfortable. Uh, but the roads are rough, but, and so what we have done is we try to fly everywhere now, which we used to drive more. Uh, we do have a short drive from uh, Antanarivo, Tana, the capital, out to Andasabi uh, National Park, also known as Perine, and that little distance actually takes close to five hours now. I did it when I was there in three, and the roads just are in bad shape. So if you're looking at Madagascar trip, it's really important to find ones that actually fly uh, around. Uh, even now in the south, when we arrive at Fort Bastine, we now fly to the camp uh, that we go to. We've been operating this trip for years. We're operating at both two trips in 17 and actually another trip in 18. Lex leads this. He's been leading it for a number of years. And I just found to complement uh, an Africa experience as you've been elsewhere, Madagascar really is completely different and brings a lot uh, of new things for you to experience, and not as many people have been to Madagascar. Yeah, I'll second that. It's completely different than the rest of Africa. The, the culture of the Malagasy people is completely different, and they're, they're wonderful, beautiful, friendly people. Um, it's, it's a joy to visit that place, but also all of the animals that you see, the lemurs, the chameleons, um, the birds, all of it is really, um, and a lot of it endemic and specific to Madagascar. So if you are um, a naturalist, then Clearly, this is a, a wonderful trip for you to go and see some things that you can't see anywhere else in the world. Um, I will mention that we do also have a ship trip that visits Madagascar. So if you are looking at this itinerary, and as John has described, um, you know, the accommodation is comfortable, but definitely not uh, what we would call luxury by any means. Um, and it, it can be a bit of um, a journey to move around throughout Madagascar. Um, we do have a ship trip that visits the Seychelles and Madagascar later in 2018, so 
you can always give us a call and look at that option as well. And if you really want a lot of travel, you can actually do the Madagascar trip <laughs> in 2018 and take the Indian Ocean program, which goes from the Seychelles down to uh, Mauritius. And then you'll be an expert and you can work for us. <laughs> <laughs> Kenya, Tanzania under Canvas. So we've had a lot of requests for Kenya and Tanzania, and I have been there. I've been. I did originally the more mainstream uh, way of doing it, and thought, how can we, how can we make this go beyond the destination, make it a Zagram experience? And so we actually have found uh, an assortment of very nice tented camps. Some of them are mobile, some are stationary, that visit um, the Masai Mara, which is one of the iconic game parks in the world, but it also got hugely developed with lodges that have 50 or 60 rooms and lots of, of, of uh, vehicles around animals. And so we go to very remote parts of the Maasai Mara. We also visit a Maasai village. Uh, and so it is a very different experience from those of you who might think, oh, Kenya, there's always going to be 20 vehicles around a kill. We will not have that on this. And we do the same thing when we get down to the Serengeti. Um, we, we visit um, uh, Gurumeti, which is out to the west, uh, and then across to some of the, the areas uh, in the south. So it is a it's a way to to visit, even if you've been to Kenya and Tanzania, to go back and see uh, it from a different perspective. Um, we also visit East Africa's largest uh, rhino sanctuary. Uh, and this is a brand new trip that we just actually released, and I think it's already half full. Yep. Uh, so it, I think we've got six people already signed up on it. So it has gone fast. I love June because the rainy season in East Africa uh, is in April, May. It ends by mid-May. So uh, by going in June, everything is green, but it's been eaten down, and so the animals are all in great shape, and it's great for photography. This A trip like this was actually my very first Africa experience back in the 70s, and I felt this is what had me fall in love with Africa. And uh, John just mentioned it's past full with six people, so that gives you an idea that most of these trips that were, actually all of them are very small groups, no more than 16, but many are around 12, and, to, and that's because we are using these smaller, more boutique, um, off the beaten path, tented camps, and also um, we have our, you know, using our own bush plane, which will limit the size of the group as well. So we like to keep it really small, intimate, um, Every single person in the group will definitely be an important part of the group. You'll have your own individual experience um, in great Africa. So then um, talking about Zambia and Rwanda, um, which is also a new program. And this picture, before we, we move on, was actually taken on our trip this last July. Those are all Zagram guests. And the person on the far left is actually Lisa Pertini uh, from our office. So this is a, a variation on the trip that is uh, the Tanzania and Rwanda. We instead visit uh, the, I'd like to call it the plains to primates. So we visit um, the two areas of Zambia, first of all, um, and then we continue and fly on a brand new flight they just put in, which is why we put this combination together up to Kigali and do the chimps and the uh, gorillas, and again, there's two days of gorilla trekking. We stay up at Virunga Lodge. Uh, and so we wanted to try to make a trip that maybe people hadn't been to as many places, and it also gives a really good perspective of the diversity of wildlife from being on a savanna plains experience in Zambia up to uh, both the chimps uh, we visit and then also the two days uh, with the gorillas in Rwanda before uh, returning back. So this is actually a new program uh, in 2018. We've done parts of it before, so it's not like uh, we haven't been there, but it's a new combination that was enabled by these new flights that now operate a couple days a week from Lusaka up to Kigali. And um, some of them, uh, the highlights I think I've gone over, but uh, you'll, you'll cover all of the big wild, all of the main wildlife, gorillas, you've got everything from the dry plains to the rainforests uh, in Rwanda. And uh, this leaves in September of uh, 2018. So that gives a, a good overview. Uh, and I think we have some questions. I'm going to yeah. turn it over now to Ellen. So we have um, a number of questions. So thank you so much for submitting those. Um, we had a question about the single pricing on, on the safari. Um, 
And it, it really varies by trip. Uh, to be honest, most of the single rates are at about 1.4 times uh, the rate of sharing. And um, again, it varies by by trip. Uh, we'd be happy to, to talk with you specifically if you give our office a call. And we also, just so the single travelers know, we also keep a wait list of people who would like to be matched with a roommate so that you, you don't have to shoulder that whole single supplement. If you would be interested in being matched with a roommate, then um, we can try and pair you up. Um, that's a good solution that a lot of people do take advantage of. Um, quick note on the single pricing for our shift trips, we do every year offer a handful of trips that have no single supplement. Um, those spots do go pretty quickly, but for um, our 2018 calendar, which we just released, we have six departures where you can go and uh, pay nothing extra to travel as a solo. Um, but for the safaris, it's about 1.4 times. Um, and again, we can pass, uh, pair you up with a roommate. And one thing to think, what one reason that is exists is because all of these camps we stay in, most of them have six to eight tents. So it's, there's very limited accommodations, uh, and and why the why we have to limit um, and have a single supplement on the programs. All right. So our next question says, uh, if you want to see a large number of animals and will only be gone 14 to 16 days, will May be okay? And where would you recommend going? Um, I would really highly recommend our signature Botswana trip. Um, huge, huge uh, diversity of animals in Botswana. Again, it's somewhere that. It's iconic for safari for a reason because it does not disappoint. And there is such a diversity of animals and really it's a safe, it's a safe trip if you, you know, you say I have time in May, I only have so many days, go to Botswana with Chris, it definitely um, will be a sure thing. Um, and let's see, so John, you might want to answer this one. It says, uh, what goes into our decisions about when to travel and in what various areas in Africa? So what goes into our decision making? So we have we, we have reasons behind all of them. Um, the for example, the, the Southern Africa diversity is actually in Botswana during green season. Lex originally designed that trip to be a follow up to the regular Botswana programs, which are a bit later. Um, uh, so as a little background, but most of them we are trying to go at what I think are the best times of year. Uh, the Botswana are at the rainy season ends actually in February, so even on Lexus trip, it's normally quite dry, but you've got green. Um, it's also, a lot of people perceive you need to go to Botswana in July or August. Uh, that is high season, the rates are higher, it's very cold in the morning, and I think you have just as good a game viewing in uh, March, April, and May, uh, and in some ways better photography. Baby animals. And ba oh, we also have baby animals in, which in the in the in the uh, in the uh, our summer you don't uh, you don't have. So that's an example in uh, in Botswana, East Africa. I think I, I mentioned we like to do it after uh, we do it in June, which is after the rainy season. And East Africa is very good between June through October. And the migration we time we try to time it at the best possible time which is a little more of hitting a moving target, uh, but there is a thought that goes into every trip we have and when we operate it. Yeah, if you're looking at a specific trip, um, give us a call or send us an email, and uh, we'll be happy to, to talk with you about the specific reasons for that, um, that itinerary. Yeah. Put you on the phone with John. All right. Um, one more question here, John, about uh, do we go to the capital, such as Windhoek in Namibia? Uh, we do go to the capital. We have a night in Windhoek before we go out uh, traveling around. And on all of our programs, if you want to come early, uh, we have extra nights. They can be booked. We include the transfer as long as you stay at our group hotel. So you could go if you want to spend more time. Um, we do, like, and the same thing is true with Kigali. We end in Kigali in Rwanda. Um, we don't go to um, Gaborone uh, because the flights directly go from Johannesburg up to Mound. But um, we do go to quite a few, and it's very easy to add time. They usually are the entry or exit point, uh, not in the middle of the itinerary. Yeah, and, and if you would like, you know, as John mentioned, if you'd like to see more of the architecture or the culture of the bigger cities in Africa, we can certainly arrange um, a pre or post uh, day or two. We do have a private travel department that many of our travelers take advantage of, um, and we can um, add something on. You know, as an example of that, if you have one itinerary in Africa that you're looking at, and you'd like to add another, a part of another one to do, you know, after you finish the group itinerary. Um, we have people who do that with the, you know, visiting the gorillas. They'll go do 
one of the itineraries that we just discussed is they can't visit the grills at the time that our itinerary is going, so they add that on at the end. Um, we like to be flexible and help you out with that, make sure that you get the safari that you're looking for. All right, I think that's all of our questions. Let me answer that one. Okay, yeah, that's all of our questions. So thank you so much for uh, joining in on our webinar. And um, again, my name's Ellen. If you have any uh, specific questions about Africa, you can email me, Ellen M, E-L-L-E-N-M, as in Mary, at Zagram.com. I'll be happy to answer those questions, get you booked on a trip, and hopefully we'll see you out there. Yep, and if, if Ellen can answer most all your questions, but if you get down to something really specific uh, about a place, um, I've probably been there, so she'll transfer you over to me. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody. Great, thank you.